this is Zach from Miscellaneous Tech, and today we're going to review the brand new Xbox One S. Alright, so let's go ahead and open this guy up. Please excuse the watermark, I forgot to hide my address, so that's why that's up there. Alright, so opening it up, we've got what looks to be a Gears of War Halo. Forza and Last of Us uh, image on the back of the box, which is pretty sweet. Two terabyte, 4K. This is the Xbox One S, the ultimate games and gaming system. So we'll flip it over on the side, showing our Dolby DTS and HDMI. It also shows the included vertical stand as well as the new upgraded Bluetooth wireless controller. Here's the front of the box, a beautiful matte white finish. Alright, so now I'm just going to show you some more pictures of the box before we proceed with the unboxing. Alright, let's cut this thing open. Alright, so the first thing in the box is this uh, green flyer. Let's go ahead and open it up. Alright, so that's just showing us that it can sit horizontally or vertically and how to attach the uh, vertical stand and then how to hook up power and your HDMI to your TV, put batteries in your controller, hit the on button, pair the controller, simple as that. All right, so we're getting closer. I see the Xbox One in there. Um, let's go ahead and pull out this side box first, though, and see what's inside. All right, so there's our new power cable. Um, now that the power supply is integrated, uh, just a single uh, power plug, which is nice. All right, and here's our HDMI cable. Very good for HDMI 2.0. And finally, the new upgraded Bluetooth enabled white Xbox One controller. I can get it out of the packaging here. Very nice. There's that new textured grip. It's supposed to add some extra ergonomics to the controller. Very beautiful, sleek. A black on white really pops. Really like this. All right, so let's pull out this back piece. Looks like we've got a 14-day trial to Xbox Live. Woohoo! All right, and more importantly, here is the Xbox One S vertical stand. It's really just a black piece of plastic. There's instructions on the bottom there. Pretty much should just slide right in and click into place. So with that in mind. Let's go ahead and close this box up and pull out the Xbox One S. So here we are. It's padded nicely. Let's go ahead and remove that padding. Alright, so now that we've got the foam padding removed, let's go ahead and remove this outer protective material.
All right, now that that side's done, you should be able to remove this. All right, Xbox One. Nice little Xbox logo engraved on it. And hello from Seattle, trademark of Microsoft. Here's our ports on the back. Got an Ethernet, a IR out, a optical out, two USB 3.0 ports, HDMI in and out, and the AC input. You'll also notice that the connect input is missing and you'll have to use a USB converter adapter. So in addition to the color change, we also now have a vertical stand option which works great and definitely frees up some space. It also seems to run even quieter than the first generation Xbox One and definitely quieter than the PS4, which is important during quiet cutscenes. Alright, so now let's flip it on the side and go ahead and install this vertical stand. Very straightforward, just clicks right into place. And now we've got a vertically positioned Xbox One S. Alright, so let's talk about the first two things that immediately stand out. That's size and color. The new Xbox One S is about 40% smaller than the original Xbox One. I'd say about 10% smaller than the PS4 overall. It has a much more sleek appearance and some great visual changes, including a nice matte white color, which I think looks great and is no longer a fingerprint magnet. Alright, so now let's take a look at the controller. So the one on the right is obviously the new one. This is how it compares to the old Xbox One black controller. Um, again, I think the white is going to hold up a little better in terms of scratches and smudging, etc. Uh, very nice controller. The back's also got that textured grip, whereas this older controller is completely smooth. Um, we'll have to see how that compares over time in gaming sessions, but so far um, I like the textured grip. It seems uh, pretty nice. Now I've seen a lot of rumblings across the interwebs about not having a black option and definitely can understand wanting to have something to not stick out in your media room. However, I think the white paint is a welcome change and a tribute to their original Xbox 360. So the first thing you'll notice when you turn on the new Xbox One S is that you've got an update to perform. It's going to take a little while to apply that update. Then it's going to ask you to go ahead and hit your home button on your uh, new Xbox One uh, controller. Then you're going to go through the typical setup where you select your time zone and then go ahead and log in to your Xbox Live profile. Uh, you will also select your power options at this stage and then you're good to go. Next you'll set up your privacy settings. After that's done you can set up instant sign-on choose your color for your theme then you're presented with this cool video but while that's running let's talk about another huge change which is the internal power supply which means no more giant ugly power brick and while we're discussing power the button has changed from a capacitive to a physical push button which is much appreciated as my dogs have turned off my console multiple times now this video runs on for a couple of minutes so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it short um, after this video runs, you're presented with a controller update, um, which you'll go ahead and proceed with. Um, hit update. After the update runs, then you'll be presented with your welcome screen. Alright, so now our controller is updated and ready to go. Alright, so let's take a look at the new dimensions of the Xbox One S and how it compares to the old Xbox One alongside the PS4. So as you can see, it's a little bit shorter than the Xbox One. It's also uh, thinner and not as deep. Now you'll notice compared to the PS4, it is a little bit taller, um, but it's not as deep. Here's the Xbox One S stacked on top of the original Xbox One. This is a great shot showing the uh, new smaller size a side profile. Let's take a look at the Xbox One S stacked on top of the PS4. As you can see the PS4 is a little bit longer uh, by about two or three inches. Um, 
they're both about the same thickness. I'd say overall the Xbox One S is about 10% smaller than the PS4. Now let's take a look at this external drive by Western Digital. It's a My Passport Ultra 1TB. It's white and it matches the Xbox One S perfectly. So if you need a little extra external storage, this would be a great fit. All right, so before I wrap up this review, there are a couple more things I wanted to point out. Uh, one of the major things being with the new Xbox One S is that the uh, Connect port is no longer there. Uh, you do have to have a special adapter for the Connect, uh, which will convert that special Connect uh, connector to a USB port. Um, now, with that in mind, Microsoft is offering one for free if you purchase an Xbox One S and an Xbox One with Connect. If you register it to their website, it will send that out to you for free. I will provide the link in the comment section below. Um, another thing I'll point out is if you uh, you know purchase the Connect later on, you will have to get that adapter. It will be available September 7th for $39.99. Um, so that's an option too. Now, although I didn't find myself using Connect a whole lot for games, um, I think the only game I really liked it in was Forza 6 with the uh, the head look function, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, but other than that, um, I did use it a lot for uh, the voice commands, um, and I immediately missed having that, you know, Xbox on, Xbox off, or Netflix pause, uh, open Hulu, etc. Uh, and that functionality uh, was definitely missed without the Connect. Uh, so if you've used the voice navigation functions, of Connect, you'll definitely want to pick up a converter, whether it be the free option or the paid option. Um, and I do want to mention that there is an integrated IR sensor um, in the Xbox One S, so you don't have to have the Connect. Um, but again, you will be missing, um, you know, that awesome uh, voice commands and that functionality. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to hardware improvements. The big upgrade here to the Xbox One S is the 4K support, obviously, which includes HDR, HDMI 2.0, 12-bit color, um, and apparently there's also been a slight bump in GPU and CPU power, uh, so that's pretty neat. Uh, 4K compatibility will mainly be reserved for 4K and Blu-ray uh, streaming playback, such as Netflix or Hulu. Um, it doesn't have the capability of upscaling. Um, it does have the capability of upscaling older 1080p games to a full 4K, which is a plus for sure. Uh, based on GPU speed, though, most future games probably won't run out of full 4K. Uh, they will be uh, upscaled, um, but you'll probably find many games running at 1440p. Um, the HDMI 2.0a enables HDR or high dynamic range capability, uh, which will allow for deeper blacks, brighter whites, and more natural colors. And this is definitely a nice addition if your TV and AV receiver support this. Uh, additionally, HDMI 2.0a supports 4K at 60 Hz. Uh, now, how does it sound? Uh, it does have some minor sound improvements if your AV receiver supports it. Um, it will do Dolby Atmos um, via pass-through at the uh, native rate. Um, now the launch edition includes a 2 terabyte drive for $399, however the 500 gigabyte and 1 terabyte models will be available later this year. Uh, with that in mind, I probably wouldn't go smaller than the 1 terabyte, as even with the free games included in your gold membership, your drive is going to fill up really quickly. Overall, I'd compare the Xbox One S to an iPhone S model. It has some great new features, the smaller footprint, uh, new 4K and HDR support, as well as a new Bluetooth controller, but nothing's earth shattering here. If you need a solid 4K Blu-ray player and already have a 4K TV and AV receiver, then the Xbox One S is definitely a worthy upgrade. However, if you don't have any of this, I think you'd be better served uh, by waiting for Project Scorpio in 2017 and upgrading your AV equipment at that time. Uh, with that in mind, um, I am definitely keeping my Xbox One S. And uh, this has been a review by Miscellaneous Tech. Please like and subscribe to our channel. Tell your friends and family. And uh, we'll have more reviews for you coming soon.